Hello friends, today in this session we will discuss solution of questions which were asked in 2022 gate examination. So let us first take the forenoon session. The first question in the forenoon session is a horizontal curve is to be designed in a region limited space. Which of the following measures can be taken to in decrease the radius of the curvature and four options are given. Now if you see the equation to calculate super elevation and radius or the equation which relate super elevation with speed and radius is 127R. E plus F is equal to V square upon 127R. Now here question is to reduce the radius of curvature. R. So, R is V square upon 127 into E plus F. Now, this can be reduced by increasing E or F, but their effect is very small. The total value of E plus F, which is permissible, is 0 0.07 plus 0 0.15, that is 0 0.22. R depends upon the speed. And therefore, to reduce the radius, we should decrease the speed. Therefore, design speed should be restricted if there is no space for providing full radius of the curve. So, the answer one is decrease the design speed. Answer two is increase super elevation. It will not help because there is a limit of increasing super elevation. Increase the design speed. No. If you increase design speed, R will increase. And fourth is restrict vehicles with higher weight from using the facility. Now, this Fourth option can also be a answer if there is multiple answers to this question because it is only single answer and therefore the correct answer or the best option is decrease the design speed. Second question is like this. Consider the four points P, Q, R, S as shown in the figure and figure is like this. This is a speed flow relationship. This is the flow Q and this is speed. And here is P, this is Q, this is R and this is S. Now, if you denote their corresponding traffic density by KP, KQ, KR and KS, then what is the relationship between these four densities? That is the question. Now, this is what it says. The question says green shield fundamental speed flow diagram. And if you recall, the green shield fundamental relationship between the density and speed is a linear one. So, this is speed V and this is density K and this is a linear and equation is Vf. 1 minus k upon kj. Now, this is the jam density. That is the maximum density. This is speed flow diagram. This is speed density curve which when you convert into a speed flow diagram, it will be like this. So, this point basically corresponds to the jam density. This is k. So, kp is the highest density. This corresponds to the capacity. That is the flow maximum flow and therefore this point will lie somewhere here at the mid point of this line because the maximum flow occurs at half of jam density. So, this is the point Q and this R now let us say S, S is when speed is the maximum that is the point S. So, this is KS, KS here is 0, almost 0 and this point R is somewhere here. So, the order is this density Kp larger than Kq, larger than Kr, larger than Ks and that is the option 1 given in the question. So, option 1 is correct. The third question is a two phase signal control intersection is designed with a cycle time of 100 second. 
the ember and drag times for each phase are 4 second and 50 second respectively. If the total loss time per phase due to startup and clearance is 2 second, the effective green time for each phase is you have to fill the value. Now here there is no flow, inflow and outflow, nothing is given. So it is basically you have to see that if there is a cycle of 100 cent second, this is C0 100 second, this is to be divided so that rad for each phase is 50 second. So here is 50 second let us say. So this is the red and this is the green plus amber plus all red time. So effective green time basically is effective G is green time plus amber time minus lost time. That is the. So green plus this is 50 minus load time is 2 second, so 48 second. And because both phases have the same green and same red, so 48 second is effective green time, 2 second is lost time, 50 second is the red second, red time and that completes your 100 second cycle. Fourth question is, at a traffic intersection, cars and buses, cars and buses arrive at a rate of 4 per four, 4 vehicles per hour and 2 vehicles per hour. This is 4 cars per hour and this is 2 buses per hour. That is the rate of arrival. Now question is the probability of observing at least 2 vehicles in 30 minutes. That is to be calculated. What is the probability? that two vehicles will arrive. Now vehicle means basically car or bus or maybe both can be car, both can be buses also. Probability of n greater than or equal to 2 at least because it says at least two vehicles. So this is the Poisson distribution. It says independent Poisson process and in the Poisson distribution the probability of x is equal to n or probability of arrival x is given by this equation into x to the power n upon factorial n. x is equal to n, where x is the average rate of arrival. Average rate of arrival here is 2 plus 4, 6 per hour. So x value is 6 upon 3600, that is 1 upon 600. And time, time is 30 minute, time is 30 minute, 30 minutes means 1800 second. So average, average rate of arrival in time 30, sec, 30 minute is 1 by 600 into 1800 that is 3. So value of here x is 3, that is the number of arrivals in 30 minutes, average number of arrivals. So this probability of n being equal to or more than 2 is 1 minus probability of n being 0 and plus probability of 1. That there will be no arrival, there will be 1 arrival and this n is equal to 0, you put here value. So this is e to the power minus 3 into x to the power 0 upon factorial 0 that is 1, 1 plus n is 1. So this is minus 3, 3 to the power 1. So that is 3 into e to the power minus 3. That is the probability of 2. And 1 minus this, if you calculate, it will be 0. Point 8, 0. That is the probability. Probability of getting 2 or more than 2 vehicles in a time period of 30 minutes. Question number 5 is the vehicle count obtained in every 10 minutes 
is given by 11. These are the traffic volume counts on a road in every 10 minutes. Question is what is 10 minute peak hour factor? Now peak hour factor generally we take on 15 minutes count but in this question it is given for 10 minutes count and peak hour factor is by definition that hourly traffic volume hourly traffic volume divided by now because it 10 minutes so you have to take six times six times highest 10 minute count 10 minute count if you take some of all these values it will be 72 so that is hourly in one hour you get 72 and highest of all these value 15 15 into 6 6 into 15 that is 72 upon 90 that point eight zero. that is the peak hour factor 0 0.80 0. this is question number 5 question number 6 in the four room session question number 6 is For the dual wheel carrying assembly shown in figure, this is the figure, a dual wheel load assembly, this is P, this is P, here is the, and that is the center to center distance, this is the clear spacing between two wheels. S is the spacing between the wheels. D is the clear distance between the wheels. Assuming that the ground is elastic, homogeneous and isotropic, half space. Now the depth. This is the depth. Find out the ratio of equivalent wheel, equivalent single wheel load at depth Z is equal to S, Z is equal to D by 2 and Z is equal to 2s. Question is very simple. If you know the load distribution pattern when a dual wheel assembly is placed on the road. Now what basically this theory says that the load distribution here, this is the size, okay, is like this at 45 degree and this is the distribution. The, this start overlapping at a depth of d by 2 and at z is equal to 2s it becomes twice of p. Before this depth two wheels act independently and at 2s their overlapping is almost complete and therefore if you plot the log of z here and log of ews here then this will be a straight line at d by 2 it is p at 2s it is 2p and therefore the ratio ratio of equivalent single axle load at d by 2 and 2s is 1 by 2 or 0 0.5 that is the answer what you need to know this distribution and how basically that changes the pressure in the payment so these were six questions which were asked in the forenoon session in the afternoon session there are another seven questions and those questions we will discuss in the next video.